Good morning, fifth grade. Um, I wanted to do some punctuation review with you. So that may help you since that's the unit that we're in right now. Um, so we're gonna talk about apostrophes first. Now you all know that we use apostrophes for contractions. When you're putting words together and leaving some out, that apostrophe goes in the place of the missing letters. We also use apostrophes when we're showing possession. So that's done some examples there. Not to make words plural. Just because a word has an S at the end doesn't mean it needs an apostrophe. So let's look at when you need one, okay? The team's coach was excited for the boys, okay? Teams is a possessive word. Coach belongs to the team, okay? One coach belongs to one team, okay? So we're gonna put an apostrophe before the S. Team apostrophe S. The team's coach was excited for the boys. Now boys ends in an S, but there's nothing belonging to the boys. There's no, nothing that shows any kind of ownership. It's simply a plural word, okay? So it does not need an apostrophe. Miss Jones' books were left on the tables, okay? These books belong to Miss Jones, okay? She's one person. Her name happens to end in an S. So to make Miss Jones possessive, we need to add the apostrophe S, okay? Books, the books belong to her. Books is simply a plural word, no need for an apostrophe. The books were left on the tables. Tables also, simply a plural word, no need for an apostrophe. Today's weather is rainy and cool. The weather belongs to today, the weather of today. It's one day, okay? We don't have several todays, it's one day. So if it's a singular word, then to make it possessive, apostrophe S. She has two A's in her name. Now this is the only time that we use an apostrophe to make something plural. <clears throat> if it's a letter, then we use an apostrophe to show that it's plural. Um, she has two A's in her name. So A apostrophe S is how we do that. The women's purses are on the second floor. Women is plural, but it does not end in an S. So to make a plural word possessive that does not end in an S, we add apostrophe S. The women's purses are on the second floor. Purses is simply plural. The students' desks had been cleaned. Okay, the desks belong to all the students. Students is plural, and the plural word ends in an S. In this instant, the apostrophe goes after the S. Okay, the desks that belong to all of those students. The students' desks had been cleaned. Now, nothing belongs to the desks. It's simply plural. So, Pay attention to whether your word is singular or plural. You should most of the time be able to tell from your sentence. I know there are some times a little hard to tell, but when you can tell for sure, if it's plural and ends in an S, the apostrophe goes at the end. If it's plural and does not end in S, then you add the apostrophe S. If it's singular, no matter what it ends with, you add the apostrophe S, okay? So that's an apostrophe review, okay? I want to show you compound sentences and just do a quick review about compound sentences. Now remember, a compound sentence is one in which there are two simple sentences put together and they're joined by a conjunction, okay? 
if I said, Mrs. Smith loves you and she misses you. Okay, here's my conjunction. I'm going to circle it. I need to have a complete sentence on both sides of that conjunction. Okay, Mrs. Smith loves you. Is that a sentence? Could that be a sentence by itself? Yes. Okay, let's check the second part. She misses you. Could that be a sentence by itself? Yes. So I need to add a comma in front of that conjunction, not after. It does matter where it goes. Mrs. Smith loves you, comma, and she misses you. you have, if you're gonna use a comma and a conjunction in between a compound sentence, you have to have both. When we talk about semicolons, that can take the place of that comma and conjunction. I'm gonna do a semicolon. There's no need for a conjunction after that in this example. Okay, see the difference? Comma and or semicolon. But what if I said this? Mrs. Smith loves you and misses you. Means the same thing as this sentence, but I've changed it a little bit, okay? Here's our conjunction. Mrs. Smith loves you, still could be a sentence on its own. Misses you is on the other side, just misses you. Could that be a sentence on its own? No, it couldn't. So in this case, this is a simple sentence with a compound verb. No comma is needed. Here, you have two sentences put together. Here, you do not. So you do not need a comma, okay? That's what you have to pay attention to when doing um, compound sentences. Now, when you diagram compound sentences, you do each simple sentence separately. Okay, so all we know how to do right now We do a little stair step. Okay, first simple sentence joined by a stair step, second simple sentence. For the first one, I'm going to put my conjunction on that stair step. Okay, that's what is joining those two together, and that's what that is. When you do a semicolon, you can just put an X there. So it depends on how your sentences are joined together. And you can tell that from whatever activity that you're doing, okay? We talked about colons. And what you learned this year is that colons go when you are telling time, it is 526. Okay, it goes between the hour and the minutes. When you're doing a scripture reference, I read Ephesians 4, 11. Chapter four, verse 11. Maybe I read 
Matthew 3, 22 through 28. Okay, still between my chapter and my verses. So that's what you use a colon for. That's what we're learning this year. Next year, you'll learn some more. Um, the next thing I want to do when we're talking about singular possessive, plural possessive, and things like that, so that you're not confused. So let's, I'm going to write some words, and then we'll decide if it's singular, plural, whatever. Okay. That'll be singular, plural, that's singular, possessive, and that's plural, possessive. Okay, you had some activities like this in your book, and you will see it again, so I want it to be clear. Ladies, it's just plural, more than one lady. Okay, there's no apostrophe, so there's no possession. So this one is just plural. Um, men's. Men, you know, is plural, and it also has an apostrophe S. Yes. So this one is plural, and it's possessive. Gooses. Goose is singular. One goose. The goose tried to peck my foot. Okay. But it has an apostrophe S. Yes. This lets you know it is singular and it is possessive. So this one would be SP. And then um, woman. One woman. Okay, that's just singular. So that you had to do that for some of the activities. So look and see what your base word is first. Is it plural? Is it singular? Is it talking about one or more than one? And then if there's an apostrophe or apostrophe S, then you include also that it's possessive. So those are the things that you should be looking at for that. Um, then you're going to get into underlining. Now when we underline the titles of things, the titles of books, the titles of newspapers, um, the names of ships, planes, and trains, and major works of art. Those are the things that we underline. Quotation marks, which are coming next, and I'll do a separate video for you for that. Um, are the shorter things. Underlining are, are names of complete work. So you underline, let's see, I read Diary of Olympic Kid. Last week. Okay, I read. That lets you know that it's a book or something, okay? The title's gonna be capitalized too, so that's a hint. The whole title is underlined, okay? Um, The USS Razorback is docked in North Little Rock. Okay, so that's the name of a ship. USS is the hint there. That stands for United States ship. But this is um, something to pay attention to. 
the name of the ship is Razorback. That's the part that should be underlined, okay? Not the USS part. Um, if there's a spacecraft like Apollo 11, um, a lot of the spacecraft are named, okay? So those would also be underlined. If a train has a name, it's gonna be underlined. Authors' names are not underlined. The artists that, that paint something or sculpt something, that's not underlined. Only the work of art. Um, let me pull an example from here and let's see. Grant Wood's painting, American Gothic, is famous. We know it's a painting, so something's going to be underlined. What's the name of the painting? American Gothic. It belongs to Grant Wood. He's the artist. We don't underline his name. We underline the name of the painting. So American Gothic, the one of the man and the woman farmers and they have a pitchfork. You've probably seen it. You underline the name of the work. So pay attention to those examples. Um, if it's the name of a movie, a play, a television show, um, you're gonna underline that title, okay? Now we do not underline the name of the Bible. It's special. It is the most special book and it doesn't follow that rule. Okay. We don't even underline the names of the books in the Bible. Um, we don't put them in quotation marks or anything like that. They're capitalized, but there's no other type of punctuation that they need. Okay. Uh, so pay close attention to that. Um, I hope this has helped you. If not, I hope that you let me know so I can, I can help you, okay? Um, I love and miss you guys.